Got a problem. It's my first time going in on second week of renovation and I have a feeling that the wall between the kitchen and the bar room is if not completely out, half out. Hello. thing in a way. It's not just the sound, it's a whole other part of the house on top of this wall. It's scary to watch something like this bolt being broken. It actually makes me emotional. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Demir. Can I eat this? I think so, yeah. Yeah, this is ice there. But I think when all of that is removed and the floors are level, it might feel a bit bigger. And then if we open this up, open that up and lift this a little bit, I'm thinking um, it would feel bigger. Very nice. Yeah. Looks bigger from this side than from the other side. Amanda is starting to break out the walls to open it up to the bride room and to the living area. So I need to be 100% certain of how far they need to open up. And in order for me to do that, I need to measure where the cabinets are going to go. I've never done this before. It's a learning process and I think I am overthinking it a little bit, but I would rather overthink it and make the right decisions than just go in blindly and just tell them to do whatever. I want to be intentional and I want to be informed. Um, so I'm doing my best to do just that with the space. So I've got some blue masking tape. I've got the sketch of the kitchen on my phone. Tape out the cabinets, I'm going to tape out where the items are going to go.
this is where the cupboards end and that would be the overhang. Ja, dat is het. Oké, dus in die ligt niet gaan hier. Ja, dat is het. Ik ga niet hier. Ik ga niet hier. Ik ga niet hier. Ik we were just informed that the bond is registered and we are officially the owners of this new beautiful house. We moved in the 26th of January and it's now the 8th of February. We were in the house and started working on the house before we were actually owners and we were just waiting for the registration to go through and then. It's an emotional chapter to close for the previous owners, for the previous ones who lived here all the time they spent in, all the memories they had here with their dad building this house. And it's also an emotional time for us to open a new door um, for something that we never thought would really be possible for us to, to own a home like this. So we are eternally grateful and I just I give God all the glory for his faithfulness and that this is something that he wanted us to have. And I know that this house is not just for us to have a good time. It's not just for us to be blessed. I know that this house is a blessing to us so that we could be a blessing. Nothing God does is ever just for us to benefit from it. Um, he thinks of all his children. He thinks of, of the impact that a blessing in our lives can have in other people's lives as well. And I'm curious to see how this unfolds and what God's heart and plan is for the space. And we're just trying to be very intentional and discerning and wise, keeping in mind God's heart and we're constantly counseling him, consulting him. God, he's counseling us. We're constantly consulting him to hear what his heart is for, for this project and trusting that he'll guide our hands and our feet. Hands and our feet. My English is done. To make it into a home that would serve our family and friends. It's day eight of renovations and they have done so 
match. All the walls that they needed to break down are broken down. All the openings are made. Now we're at the point where they need to remove all the tiles still. They need to remove the big sliding door in the new kitchen and then patch up that area so we just have a doorway there. Then they still need to build this addition. Why does it feel like it's it? <laughs> oh, and they need to build the bri, of course. I'm very shocked at how quickly things happened and how beautifully open the space feels now. All the rooms are connected and there's flow, there's openness, there's light, and it just feels so much better in here. It makes sense for our lifestyle now, but I can now start visualizing the layout of the spaces now that all the walls are open. Some of the things that I completely overlooked and forgot to think about was plugs and light switches. So for instance, in this wall behind me that they took out coming into the kitchen, the dining room light and the kitchen light was attached on that piece of wall. Now we need to reroute the switches to a different place. So these are small things that we completely overlooked and didn't think of adding that into our initial quote. So this is items that's being added to the quote. As with any renovation, you get the original quote and you just add a 10% maybe 15% if you want to play it safe, for unexpected expenses. In our case, we have a very limited budget to work with, so we need to be very careful with our expenses and, and what we add. This flooring needs to lift. So you'll see over here that when they broke out this wall between the bri room and the new kitchen, there's about a five to seven centimeter difference in height. We don't want to keep it like this because this is definitely going to be a trip hazard. You, you can't see the little lip, so someone's going to get hurt. Over here, looking into the dining room from the bri room, you'll notice that there was a plug in the wall. The wall disappeared and now there's a plug that needs to go somewhere. So that's maybe a good educational point that when you're looking at breaking out any walls, be cautious as to what switches and plugs are on the wall that's going to be broken down and where that needs to move to so that you can calculate or factor in the cost of moving those electrical points to a place that makes sense. It's so crucial when it comes to the flow and the function of the space. Put the light switches in a place that makes sense. We have a few light switches in this house that are a little bit strange just because of all the additions that was made over the years. It's gonna to be too costly for us to change the location of those switches, but where I had the control of placing a switch, I was intentional with it. See it being a problem coming out of the living space, walking over here to switch on the light and then going into the kitchen. I didn't see that being a problem. Dit maak my sin om dan soen te te gaan om jou kom buiten aan te sit. En dit is die naaste, naaste punt. En as jy van die voordeur afkom, dan gaan jy ook van die soe om die voordeur. Ja, klaar. Of is dit beter om met die raai meer te sê? Daar. Nee, hy had dit daar. Dan sit ons om daar. Daar. Wow. Now I've had to think about it. If you're in the living room and it's getting dark and you want to put on the kitchen light, it might just be easier to put the light switch over here. It's really important to put your light switches in convenient places in terms of the movement, the natural movement in your space. You don't want to come into your kitchen from the right hand side 90% of the time, but you have to walk to the other side of the room to put on the kitchen light. It's gonna be annoying. So I hope that helps. We figured out about a week ago that we have a mouse in the flat. We thought it was one, but then a few days ago, my husband spotted another one. So there's a little family living here in our flat and we didn't want to put a mouse trap down that's gonna hurt them. So we got these um, mouse friendly mouse traps on take a lot. And Henry put them down in two spots where we usually see them on the kitchen counter, which is usually between the microwave and the air fryer. Um, we went out for coffee to come back to two that have buddies in them. Look at them. 
feel so bad for them being in a little house here like that. We want to release them somewhere far away from our house. And then we need to seal the gap that they lived in, which is there behind the cabinet. So we just need to put like a cord around or something there to cover that gap so they don't come back. Things are happening here today. Um, they started to um, build clothes, the openings that need to build, be uh, closed. They're starting to work on a braai. They're starting to work on the wall that goes into the scullery. So it's crazy. And this is actually the first time I'm seeing them lowering Ooh, bricks into our yard. Let me show you. Got a problem. You need to remember my windows. There's going to be two windows. Yes. Okay, we need to do two windows here, my friend. Um, so let me come around and I'll quickly measure it for you so you know where to put the gaps. Okay. okay. It's still wet so you can take it off, yeah, eh? Yeah, okay. Off. Good. <sighs> My stomach is like this. I'm so nervous. <sighs> Let me just breathe. Wait, I'm getting a call. As I was saying, I'm pretty nervous because I just had to give the measurements through to the contractor or the builders here of where I'm so nervous about it of where the windows in the kitchen need to go I'm confident that it's in the right place but um after they build up the wall I'm thinking like oh you know it's going to bring in enough light I asked them to make the openings for the windows that they're building wider than the window is so that we have room to move them around wherever we need them and um, so that gives a little bit of flexibility a little bit of movement room for me to make my final decision which i'm very grateful for and um, thankfully my contractor was very smart with that idea yeah and i'm just concerned about the light um because obviously we took out a very big sliding door a glass sliding door that brought in so much light and now we only have these two windows but i think the fact that the the brick and the cement is all very dark so the space does feel a little bit dark um and we're going to paint the ceilings lighter so that's good it's going to feel lighter in there and i know with painting all the walls lighter and getting in the wood floors because everything is just cement and brick at the moment it doesn't look very nice so i know i've done projects before where you get in the middle of a project and it's not the final thing yet and you start questioning yourself and doubting yourself did i make the right decision but I've also learned that I need to trust my instinct and to stick it out because when it's done, I'm going to be happy with it. I know. And, um, you know, I pray about this project daily and I ask God, please guide me. Please show me. Holy Spirit, make me aware of the things that I'm not thinking about. Help me to notice what I'm not noticing. Help me to pick up on things I'm forgetting. And every evening after the builders are gone, I walk into the house and I walk around in the mornings as well before they come. I sit in the space and I just look at everything. And then I picture myself in that space and I, I 
check the measurements and remind myself, okay, you know, is this flow going to work? Does this make sense? And there's been a lot of times where I've changed my mind because I, in this stage of the process, saw something that I didn't see initially. And I, I trust with all of my heart that that's Holy Spirit showing me, you know, and I, I need to be diligent for my end as well to, to go have a second look and a third look. Um, because that, that allows him to show me things that I didn't see before. So I'm confident at this point that this is the best it's going to get in terms of what we have to work with. You just hope that you're doing the right thing. Yeah, on the other side of the paving. So the paving was standing up over there and um, a few of our friends and Henry actually wondered if it's not a root of a tree and it seems to have been exactly that. So we've got Joseph removing the, the roots and then he'll lay the paving back down.